to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, it's New Year's time, baby. Oh, yeah. See you later, 2020. <laughs> Welcome into the show, Thursday, December 31st, the final day of 2020. And uh, here we are with another Megalodon episode of the show. I mean, you have to imagine the shark, right? The Megalodon Mm -hmm. beast. Yes. I mean, they come from a litter of sharks, right? So this might be the runt of the Megalodon litter. Or is that a bad way to talk about our show? Well, that's probably not the best. Well, let me ask you this. The runt of the Megalodon litter. It's still huge. Would you want to swim next to it? No. Would you want to be in a boat over it? No. No. No, and we have a ferocious episode. Ooh. Week 17 matchups. We have... Now you just got me thinking, Did when when the Megalodon gave birth, Right. was it really multiple Megalodons... Maybe it was just one, and it ate its way out of the mother. That's probably, probably true. Yeah. I mean, those things were were tenacious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always wanted one. <laughs> All right, taking it up to 100 news and notes, fantasy forecast starts of the week, boom, boom, kicker. Uh, certainly going to fall short in the boom, boom, kicker after last week's spectacular geopolitical oh, man. rhyme. Oh, man. And prop it's like it's hot today. <laughs> I don't think I pronounced that right. Uh, we have a... Busy show, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. Social media right now, we have some posts up asking for your favorite show moments for from this past year, Brooks. Is that's, that right? That's right. Because the footies are on the way. The footies are coming very soon. The nominations will go up on Tuesday. So we need your, your we need favorite your moments. Help. Mm-hmm. We yeah. need your help assimilating the best moments of this year. At that point, Brooks and his staff will begin work on the footies award show. Mm-hmm. Which is complex, but he has enough people under his purview to take care of it. So thank you, Brooks, for handling the footy awards. That will be fun. It is always quite fun. What I was surprised at was the quantity of nickname nominees. There were a lot this year. And I felt like there was not many. I know, but there was a gigantor amount. Whoa! Does okay. that mean it's going to be an, a more even playing field? A lot of times there's like a clear home run. It could be. Nickname of the year. But I, I think I think this is going to be a tough competition this year. You want to know what I'm most excited about for the footies? I want to know. When Pete the River music. wins? Oh, okay. oh, yeah. I mean, I can, I can hear it in my I can hear it in my head right now. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, I watched the uh, – somebody tweeted the origination of Philip River's name being shortened to P. River. Oh, man. And um, it was it was a good time. It was very fun. We we really leaned in there with mm-hmm. the river metaphors, and it was great. Very happy about that. All right, um, are we are we ready to go? We're going to take it up to one hundred because there's a lot to, on the line. We will take it up to one hundred, but it's New Year's Eve, fellas. You got to have the resolutions. Oh my! Do you have you guys been thinking about it? What you're going to try and fix next year? I feel like I'm going pretty cliche. <laughs> That's hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I I want to um, uh, do less uh, the screen time. Okay, like, that okay. has gotten out of control a little bit, mm-hmm. and so I want to like flip that to like reading books a little bit more, and then like get get healthier, exercise more, that stuff. Mm-hmm. I am very similar to Andy's, except mine are the opposite. I'm looking to gain some lbs. Oh. And get on some screen time a little bit more. I have not been finishing my they work shows together. quick enough. No, I'm. I'm. Uh, it's definitely weight loss. It's weight loss. And time. you've been crushing it. I'm down twenty right now. I'm gonna keep going. Good for you. Getting the word a little bit more this year. Those are my main resolutions. That's that. That's my 2021. I had the book one last year, and I was like, and I said, read. I set the bar real low. One book a month. One book completed, fellas. For oh, the year. right, <laughs> man. <laughs> You accomplished one twelfth of your goal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Now hold on. Let me let me just. <laughs> I I really hope it was the first month of last year. Oh no, it was actually uh, in November. Oh, okay. <laughs> you wrapped it up at the end. <laughs> and my wife was like, "You better hurry up." <laughs> I'm gonna you gotta be honest. meet your goals. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. When you said you set the bar really low, 
when you started to say one, I thought you were going to say one book. I want to finish a book. You said one a month. I was like, oh, man, you've got some standards. So, so I found- what's your what's your 2021? Uh, abs. 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 Whoa. I'm going just vain. Like, I, getting healthy, don't care. Don't care. Abs. Right, but, right. Ja- ab- what would a person look like if they were real flabby <laughs> everywhere but had just boss abs? <laughs> But like the the focus on one part only, that would be impressive. I don't think it would work. <laughs> I don't, no. What was the uh, Lady in the Water? Was that the movie where the guy had yes. one arm that so he only dumb. worked out, and it was a giant arm? Yes. And wait, one, that happened in that movie? Yes, yeah. it did. Yeah, it was super stupid. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my worst films, guys. <laughs> you hate that movie? Yeah. Wait, is Giamatti? In yeah, Giamatti's in it. Yeah. I regret oh. doing that one. Oh, he's the star. <laughs> He's the star. But he wait, is he the lady in the water? Ah, uh, no. No, oh. he's not. Giamatti in the water? He's the just the normal guy around. Is he the one armed man? Nope. No, that's the fugitive. <laughs> yeah. He's got one <laughs> gigantic you, muscular arm. <laughs> okay. I don't feel any guilt for having that sidetrack on this show. So no. your resolution is abs. Got it. Yep. We can do it. <laughs> we can do it. Let's take it to one hundred. This is a very important week. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head and Shoulders. Available at Walmart. It is time. Oh, man. Mike and I are staring down a championship in this year's Taking It Up to 100 segment. Last and week. And. Oh, what? And. What? what Oh, oh baby! There is a trophy so in there, my hands. There is a real trophy. A real trophy. Oh my gosh! It says fantasy champion. It has a crown, and one of you two gentlemen will have it. Well, this is spectacular. Mm. Last week, Mike and I both hit on our taking it to 100 picks, meaning that this is. I mean, one of them. I'll just say. Yeah, one of them was better than the other. One, one of them scored two touchdowns. Right. Right. Yeah. Not, you can't take it, it to. But 200. this isn't taking it to 200, Mike. <laughs> So this is the final week, oh, man. and we have a trophy on the line. I don't really know why Jason said it more on Mike's side of the desk than mine. Because of the two touchdowns. Oh, man, that's fair. All right, so this week I am going to go with – I really wanted to go with DJ Chark because he's you're my guy and, mm. and Mike Glennon's his quarterback and just the irony and wonderfulness of him taking it to 100 in this matchup against you, it just would have brought me a lot of joy. But mm-hmm. he did not practice, so I think he may take it to zero this week. So I will go with Sterling Shepard taking on Dallas, a playoff berth still on the line for New York. If they win and Washington loses, which could happen, absolutely. It could. And uh, and then Sterling Shepard without Golden Tate. Tate didn't practice. Uh, I think this is a week where Shepard divisionally could uh, take it to 100 and give me a trophy. Um, For my taking it to 100, Nobody which cares. is super important. No one important, cares, Jason. Super duper important. <laughs> well, hey, let me let me put it this way. Okay, since I'm out of the running. Okay. Mike, do you want mine? Which uh, who do you got? Who well, you got? look at look, look I'm just saying. Uh, no. no. All right. Okay. All right. I mean, we we almost have the same well, but guy. we both got Ty, but I'm going with Tyron Johnson. Uh Keenan Allen is out. Tyron Johnson has been good while Keenan has been hobbled. He's he's been a solid wide receiver for the Chargers over the last month against Kansas City and their presumed backups. So I, I think Tyron Johnson is gonna take it up to one hundred this week and is a fine play. And I'm going with Ty Johnson, the new starting running back for the New York Jets. That's right, people. I'm betting the house on a New York Jets We're running back. We're both going to New York, too. Because this is what we have to do in Week 17 when we take it up to 100. He's taking on the Patriots. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Frank Gore got knocked out of the, uh, in the beginning of a game that turned into 24 opportunities and Ty Johnson domination. That was the Raiders. I would rather be calling Ty Johnson against the Raiders. I don't love the matchup, but I'm going to pump up the volume with Frank Gore out and LaMichael P. Ryan, the rookie, being placed on the COVID list. I think that Ty Johnson has a good chance to see 20-plus opportunities again. What happens if we both take it to 100 this week? Who gets the trophy? I th- I think we both do. Okay. We, we could always come up with some sort of challenge. Ooh, it's got you want to do a race? It's got a little diamond on the top. Oh, it does. Do you want to do fancy. like a 100-yard dash or like a throwing, like a, throwing a football contest? Uh, well, last time we did a, a football Shh. contest, I did win. But, yeah, an endurance race. You're on. I think I should I should get to pick 
whoever's taking it to 100 does better, <laughs> according to my opinion. That's yeah, we could do that. We could Jason, do that. I mean, the- have I congratulated you again and told you how how fine you are looking today? Uh, no, but I would love to hear it. You're down like 30, right? Uh, 40? Only 20, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into the news. Let's go, Ty Johnson. Oh, by the way. You can take your hair up to 100 with Head & Shoulders available at Walmart. You can pick yours up today and check out uh, our championship crowning next week. Oh, man. Does that does the crown come off of the trophy to put on your head? No, uh, you've got to put the entire trophy on your head. That's fine. I'm willing. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. All right. Thoughts and prayers with Dalvin Cook this yeah. week. He is out. Week 17. Family emergency. It turned out his father passed away, mm. and uh, he won't be out there. And you know, with the COVID protocols and stuff, if you if you take a, a, a you know a, a leave of absence, you're not able to get back in time. So he will be out. Uh, Madison is practicing. It will probably be a conglomeration of backs uh, there in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Mike Davis doubtful. CMC out. So. Rodney Smith is actually a, a potential play this week. Sure. He's looked good to me, and um, he's on the list of, of uh, potential. Like Ty Johnson, Rodney Smith, Darwin Thompson. These Th will those be are your real league, names. These will be your Week 17 <laughs> league winners. Yeah. Yeah. You, you will Part of the celebration process for Week 17 will be learning who won you the week. That's like right. learning about them. Right. Um, and the, the downside is you can't commemorate. <laughs> like, you know how you get, oh, go to Pristine Oxford, get a signed right. jersey. These don't exist. <laughs> they don't print them. Um, that's that's yeah, correct. They, they made one, and the player wears it. That's right. You've got to you've got to write him a letter. See if you can get that off his hands. The player wears it. Oh, I'm just picturing that they buy their own jersey on pristine auction, and then they wear it. Uh, Robbie Anderson did not practice on Wednesday. He could be out groin injury. Um, Doug Marone says James Robinson won't play. That is good for James Robinson. They don't. They're not playing for anything. Kyler Murray is good, going to play on Sunday against the Rams. You know who is likely not going to play on Sunday versus the Rams is Chase Edmonds. I'm hearing from local beat reporters. It's it's not been reported anywhere outside of that, but uh, they they said he, there's no way he's playing. No, he's not. He's got a hip injury, came out early last game, and will not be there. I agree oh, with you. Oh, man. Kenyon Drake, 1.9 a carry. <laughs> it's coming up. That's probably true. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins didn't practice. He went out uh, briefly in the last game. He has been banged up all year. He, w I can't imagine he won't play. He will play. Um, if anything, just to keep Jalen Ramsey busy, well, Kyler has to target somebody else. Uh, Keenan Allen won't play. Lev Bell didn't practice. It actually makes you wonder if some of the usage last week had to do with this, but he's got an injury, and this is why I think Darwin Thompson's actually a smash play this week. Yeah, I, I would, I would agree if we knew for sure it would him. It would be him. I think Daryl will play. Dallas Goddard did not practice. Oh, Zach, Zach Hurts. Remember him? Fresh from the laundry. You were talking about making him. You're taking it to 100 because of the situation. Yes. But then I believe your words were, "But he sucks." Yeah, yeah. And that, and therefore, that's, you that's mean. Well, right. <laughs> All right, DJ Chark did not practice on Wednesday. I wanted to make him a taking it to 100, but uh, he may not be out there. Uh, and he hasn't really been out there for your fantasy team, although last week he – I mean, he's a good player. That's, yes. that's the thing we can't forget heading into next year with Trevor Lawrence. Mm -hmm. um, DJ Chark has had flashes this year of the same level of play as last year, but dealt with injuries and Mike Glennon, and that is enough to disintegrate your Yeah, value. I mean, you, you watch his touchdown catch last week, and you're like, oh, man, I, for, I forgot how talented he is, how fast, tall, yeah. body control, but uh, not not in 2020. Evan Ingram limited in practice with a calf injury. That's They need him to, yes, they to try to win. No, they and don't. Yes, <laughs> they don't. Every time Daniel Jones targets Evan Ingram, it's a it, – it, the conglomeration of total targets – to Evan Ingram, I have to Can imagine. Can you please not call him that? He is Pro Bowler Evan Ingram. Yeah. It is not Evan Ingram. It is Pro Bowler. Please refer gonna, to him I'm by his official soap. name. Wash your mouth. Can yeah. someone like vet what is the quarterback rating when Daniel Jones targets Evan Ingram? Because it's a net negative. It has yeah, but to that's got to be on the sliding scale of Daniel Jones targets. 
sure, compare them to everyone else. It's not a good idea. Anyways, I'm done with my anti Evan, <laughs> my anti Pro Bowl Thank Evan you. Ingram. Thank takes. you, uh, Antonio Gibson, Alex Smith, Terry McLaurin. Uh, they didn't practice. If I had to give you a bet here, I would say Gibson is certain to play. Alex Smith, I would say, is probable. And Terry McLaurin, I would say, unlikely. I would agree with that, yeah. Uh, Alex Smith's calf injury has been reported as functional issues, not just soreness or things of that nature. Like, it's an actual issue. So, we'll see. It would be Taylor Heineke. If yep. And right. I have that number, Jason. It looks like it is 63.2, the passer rating. Sounds about when, exactly what I was saying. What's his actual passer rating on the year? Daniel, Daniel Jones. Jones that yeah, because that, that's the, what I'm saying. It has to be relative to Daniel Jones sure, throwing the football absolutely. in general. So 63.2. All right, let me go find that while you say the rest of the news. All right. Okay. Uh, the rest of the news is that Matthew Stafford didn't practice, but is 50-50 to play, according to Ian Rappaport. I would say one other piece of news in it, in the must-win to get in game between the Arizona Cardinals and the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, yesterday at a press conference, uh, liar, liar, uh, Sean McVay. Well, I say that because this is him talking, and, and also he's been his, known to lie. His pants are on fire. Right, his pants are usually on fire. But he said he would not bet against Cam Akers as far as not playing. He... he was basically saying he thinks Cam Akers has a good shot to play. I was told Todd Gurley's knee was okay. <laughs> Wink. Yeah. Uh, but the passer rating here for Daniel Jones, according to PFF, is 78.9. 78.9 okay. versus 63.2 targeting pro bowler Evan Ingram. Uh, yeah, there you go. And I will say this. We didn't report it. We should have. Cooper Cup was verified as positive. We'll miss, yes. we'll miss the game. So yesterday there was some thought that maybe we didn't know if he was positive. We just knew he was on the COVID list. So mm -hmm. otherwise, uh, you will have John Wolford at quarterback in that game against Arizona. So that'll be fun. Can we? He's he can he can run a little bit. Oh, like the wolf, hungry like the wolf. Yeah. Okay. Nice December thirty first entry into the <laughs> what Duran Duran? The not, wolf? They're not hip anymore. Uh, for our show they are. <laughs> and uh, the wolf, I'm down. Yeah. Oh man. We, we got to get introducing. We, we got to get to the weekend. Get to get to Friday. There, you know, there's nothing like a Friday feeling. That's right. Yeah. And that's tomorrow. With First Leaf, every day can feel like Friday because award-winning wine from First Leaf is the way to go about it. I, I mean, you, when you join this wine club, I, you know, I'm in it. And I love it because you can you can do the ratings yourself. You get basically you you take a test, tell them what you like, tell them what you don't like. They send you a curated, uh, high quality wines for affordable prices, and then you rate them. And your box changes every single month. You get it on time. It's easy to pause or renew, see when it's coming. It's really great because you're going to end up with better wine than you'd pick out from the store at better prices usually than you know you can afford outside of a wine club. It's much more affordable way to enjoy like top winemakers and vineyards. Uh, it's it's great. You'll get an unbelievable price. So what are you waiting for? You know, get that Friday feeling. Yeah, like I do with First Leaf. Join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for twenty nine ninety five and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf dot com slash footballers. That's six bottles of wine for twenty nine ninety five and free shipping. Tryfirstleaf dot com slash footballers and we are about to get into the fantasy forecast for week 17 um i don't have an ad read for you i have a message for you and the mm -hmm. message is that uh if you're in a fantasy league you probably have a fantasy champion and if you have a fantasy champion they probably need a trophy and if you want to get them a trophy you can get them at fantasychamps.com and you can get a completely free championship ring right now a special promo so if you buy a trophy you get a free ring which is a 60 dollar awesome super bowl style ring yes and uh, we are putting in our order today for all of our leagues, and we will use the code free ring at checkout. So put the trophy in the cart, put the ring in the cart, put the code in the cart, and your ring is free. And one of the things you could do if you you know, let's say your league is one of those where you you, you know you pull together, everybody mm -hmm. chips in and buys the trophy. You be the one to order it. And don't tell them about that <laughs> ring. <laughs> That's fantasychamps.com. Now I'm putting in the order in for all of our conglomerate of leagues today. And my plan is to kind of do some misspelling issues on all of Mike's gear. Mm -hmm. So that way when he gets it. Yeah. I apologize to... for all the typing you had to do for all the winning I did. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mike Wright. R-I-G-H-T. <laughs> all right. I Honestly, every time I try to insult him, he always can come back with, I won the championship. And that is it's, annoying. It's a strong position. It's a strong position to be in. <laughs> 
All right, into the forecast we go. Fantasy forecast. I, I guess before I get the order in, uh, Al, uh, Judge, do you guys need anything? <laughs> oh, oh, get bodied. Oh, I pre-laughed at that oh. joke. That thing was solid. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. Uh, please keep recording and editing and putting the show up. Otherwise, that joke won't make the air. Um, and the people need, they need to, to hear know it. your losses. Uh, we love you. We do. <laughs> okay. Week 17, it's all about motivation. And we're going to go through every single matchup here and tell you on a sliding scale, one to five, what is a team's motivation for playing football this week? Really, that is what makes the difference. I mean, you've gotten to week 17 with certain players. You need to know whether you can play your studs or not. I mean, that's that's the truth. So mm -hmm. we do have a wonderful five levels of motivation. This is the team's motivation to play. Level one is the Jay Cutler level of motivation. That's mm -hmm. full DGAF. Mm -hmm. They're going to be smoking on the sideline. <laughs> Don't care. Smoking in the huddle. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, that is the lowest level of motivation you can achieve as a person. The level two level is, uh, of course... Number two. It is the Adam Gaze level, and that is the about-to-be-flushed level. So that is very low motivation. Not quite Jay Cutler DGAF, but pretty much. Level three is the Mike Glennon level. <laughs> that is the just happy to be here. As, I mean, that's a, perfect, that's, that's a perfect representation of, man, it's nice that I get to play football. If you of. want to call it the Chase Daniel level, that's fine too. But uh, the Mike Glennon, uh, the level three, that's, mm -hmm. that's the medium motivation level four is the tony robbins experience that is the motivated to achieve so you might not be at the level of playing for a playoff berth but you're at the level of reaching some goals of some sort maybe it's seeding maybe it's records maybe it's uh pride divisional matchup mm -hmm. could be any of those reasons and then the level five full blown full blown full on matt Foley getting the championship down by the river. <laughs> that is the, uh, according to our editor-in-chief, the about to have a hemorrhoid from zeal to win. That is the maximum motivation level. Has a lot of zeal. Did you achieve level five motivation in your fantasy championship match, Mike? Did you? How many hemorrhoids you got right now? Four. Four. Oh, that's that's painful. <laughs> You're uh, sitting on one of those. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, one. Pillows? I'm on multiple donuts right now. <laughs> uh, week 17 megalodons <laughs> are the most fun. Oh yeah, yeah. So let's dig in. We only have a few hundred matchups to to go through here. All right, the Miami Dolphins at 10 and five are taking on the 12 and three Buffalo Bills. We've got the Dolphins rated at a motivation level of five. They are fighting for a playoff spot and they need to win. That is good. For it's, predictability. It's great. I mean, you know they're going to go all out. The weird thing is in a game that they must win, we still expect Tua to be the starter. It's, it's just dumb. You're just throwing that out there. I'm just throwing that out uh, there. Tua's going to start. He may not finish. That's the truth. That's the situation at quarterback now. you In the last game, that is 100% correct. Yep. Yep. All right. Motivation level for the Bills is two. Level two. That's the Adam Gaze level. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they have playoff seating on the line. Yeah, they technically have seating on the line. If the Steelers um, win the game, then the Bills need to win their game to retain the higher seed. So that does matter a little bit to them. However, the Steelers are benching Big Ben. Um, and so I, I, I do – like I'm not playing – there's no chance I'm playing Josh Allen. Zero. The fact that last year, week 17, they gave him the start – and then he was out of the game. He didn't play at all. Was, you know, 10% of the snaps on the game. I expect that to be what happens this week. And without Allen, you have huge question marks around receiving core, Stephon Diggs and company. So bear that in mind when you make your decision with Buffalo this week. If I'm benching Josh Allen as a head coach, I'm benching Stephon Diggs too. Josh Allen's not going to be your head coach this week? He's saying if he were the head coach. Yeah, if oh, I was the head I coach see. and I'm choosing to bench Josh Allen. I, I heard both. Uh, I heard what Andy I've said. I've got week level <laughs> 17 of comprehension. I apologize, Mr. Moore. Uh, Miles Gaskin is a smash play this week. Yes. And there you go. Mike Gesicki, you could put him in the lineup as well. Agreed. Let's move on. Well, the Baltimore Ravens. Well, from this game, 
It's just those two. Yeah. Just Gaskin and Gasicki. Those are the only two players you can play. Carol Baskin and Mike Gasicki. Yes. All right. The Ravens at 10-5 and five are taking on the 4-10-1 Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, motivation level for the Ravens is a level five. They need to win the game to get in. That is spectacular for Lamar Jackson, J.K. Dobbins, even Hollywood Brown, I think, yeah. in this must-win matchup. And it's a great matchup for Mark Andrews. Um, obviously, anybody out there with Mark Andrews is going to be playing him. But, you know, look, people got to the championship with Travis Kelsey, and you don't get to. This is just congratulatory. And Gus Edwards is in play as a low-level uh, RB2 for me. And the level of motivation for the Bengals is a three, which I agree with. This is a divisional game. You could disrupt Baltimore. And the way that they played against Pittsburgh and the, the way that they played last week shows me that this team is making, taking some steps and they want to keep that, that momentum. Yeah, going. 100%. This is no different than the Bengals have been the last several weeks. Everything you've seen from them, they're trying to get better as a team. They're not trying to get a better draft pick. They're already in the rebuild. They've already got their quarterback of the future. So this is really, I, I, you know, they don't have the same level of motivation, but they are fully going to be in this game. I don't expect any uh, benching. Brandon Allen should be the quarterback. So even though the Baltimore Ravens defense is good, you know, T. Higgins is a type of player that – Oh yeah. Um, I, I would like, I, I, I would really like T Higgins if for some reason, Tyler Boyd does not make it through the concussion protocol. He was limited Wednesday. So pay attention to that. Um, if he does start, then I, th I think Boyd and Higgins are both okay plays. Sure. And, uh, Giovanni Bernard yeah, or Gio? Samaj AP Ryan. I'll go the PPR dump off Gio Bernard. He seemed to be so involved. I, I would agree, and and it's not a great matchup for either. We, what we've seen from Geo is success in really easy matchups and putridness in difficult ones. Ravens twenty first against running backs last six weeks. That's not. I mean that's that's a that's an above average matchup. Yeah, I I I believe Calais Campbell will be right. active, and obviously you're you're going to get the best version of the Ravens this week. The Pittsburgh Steelers at 12-3 and three take on the 10-5 and five, uh, Cleveland Browns. The motivation level of the Steelers is at a 1 because with Mason Rudolph announced early, they are showing their cards in this game. There is no level of confidence that I have with any of the pass catchers, any of the running backs. The Steelers are off my board minus maybe Eric Ebron due to tight end scarcity. Yeah, if you uh, are thinking about playing anyone from the Steelers, go watch some tape from last year. And then don't yeah. do it. And go, oh, yeah. yeah, that Mason Rudolph is not good. The Browns, on the other hand, are a level five of motivation. This is full Matt Foley, Jason. Oh, they are definitely living in a van down by the river. They need to get into the playoffs, and they need a victory to do it. They have to be overjoyed with the Mason Rudolph announcement. Yeah. Uh, however, they have shown at times this year to be – a collapsing level of offense uh, without their wide receiver core in certain weeks. And now this team in general has COVID protocol issues. There could be more names missing from this game uh, than we know right now. Yeah, it's not good. Their their facility is closed right now. Obviously, we had the close contact issue last week. Um, you they know, should it, get their wide receivers back. Though. Yes, the wide receivers were close contacts false uh tests so far so um the, the wide receiver core should be there I I do worry about I mean keep in mind when you talk about go watch Pittsburgh games last year the offense was putrid Mason Rudolph cannot move mm -hmm. the ball I agree but they were a 500 team one game out of the playoffs with Mason Rudolph their defense is still good and I don't think that the level one motivation will be there on the defensive side of the ball in a divisional matchup so I, I don't think this is an easy sledding game what the? for the Cleveland Browns what is the game line in Vegas on this right now because this can't be right okay it's the Browns minus nine and a half okay yeah our, our one one of the notes here said Steelers minus nine and a half and that made no sense I think the Browns win the game I think uh, Nick Chubb redeems himself if you're still playing him, and uh, Jarvis Landry and company are going to get it done. What do you think about Rashard Higgins this week? If you need him, he'll be out there. Okay. <laughs> so let me ask real quick: the 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 Rashard Higgins, the the T Higgins. Let's just talk about Higginses. Okay. Sure. Um, versus guys that got you here that are talented that are playing. 
but with Mason Rudolph. Your Deontay Johnson. Are you benching a Deontay Johnson for a T. Higgins? Or a Rashard Higgins? Or a Rashard Higgins? Or are you playing the, the Claypools and the for Deontay's? I, I would play T over Deontay. Uh, but, sure. I, but I would not play Richard. Richard Higgins over Deontay Johnson. I agree with that. I agree and with that. and uh, Claypool? No. No, oh, yeah. yeah. Claypool, just his, his role in the offense, you can't trust a deep ball from Mason Rudolph. That's exactly right. Like, you, you, you got a few shot plays with him. and You could see the future for Deontay Johnson last year because he, like he had at least some minimal success with Mason Rudolph. He was the he was the one who had it. He was yep. I think he led the team in receptions. So He was great. He had big time touchdowns so multiple weeks with him. He is the one who can get open and that's exactly Or maybe it was with Duck Hodges. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but he's the one who can act who can get open on nearly any route and Mason Rudolph needs a wide open wide receiver to consider throwing the ball. Okay. So for the Steelers it's Deontay Johnson and possibly Eric Ebron. Yeah. Yeah. If needed. Uh, Vikings six and nine taking on the Detroit Lions five and ten, got a motivation level of four for the Vikings. Um, you agree with that? I mean, it, it's high because they have really nothing to win for. But I think what what Kyle is talking about here is just you know, Dalvin. Yeah, got, playing got, for you Dalvin. Got, you got the emotional, uh, human aspect of the team wanting to win, and it's, they want to beat the Lions. There's also some records on the line for Justin Jefferson. He needs 46 yards to break Randy Moss's franchise record for a rookie, which I think he'll achieve in this game. Love Kirk Cousins. Uh, it is a divisional game. Detroit's motivation is probably slightly lower here with Matthew Stafford's injury, with their record and situation. So DeAndre Swift looks like a play to me. I wouldn't, sure. I wouldn't be playing Stafford even if he was – active due to what happened last week marvin jones though is he in play without matthew stafford uh can we get david blau in there or is it going to be chase daniel <laughs> honestly that matters so much uh from what i could tell reading up because i i was looking into that question it will be chase daniel over david blau should matthew stafford not not be in the game okay there you go big irv smith oh yeah is a great play this week yeah we were talking in the office he was the number three overall tight end uh, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Then Mike played him. Yes. And he was nothing because right. Tyler Conklin. Mm -hmm. well, what's up? And then uh, <laughs> a big Irv came back at as a number two finish last because week. Because you realize in between what happened. Because big Irv was on my roster. Oh, you dropped I him. I dropped him. So the, the incubation station of me cooking up some hot fantasy right. players, it just kept going. You have, you have dropped some great post-drop players yes also andy i don't believe this show has been blessed by your tyler conklin um <laughs> conk, 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 conk. this happens every single time when we're watching football on sunday every single time tyler conklin catches the ball we get a conk conk from andy it is such a delight <laughs> that, that's about right i we've made the joke that sunday mornings when watching games is a bit of a proving ground yeah. for some of these uh some of these jokey jokes. <laughs> Sometimes think you know, <laughs> let, let's let's kind of break down the process of making a joke. It's very complicated. It begins with is it a pun? And that's the that's actually the process, right? Right. There. That's yep. where it's gonna end, is <laughs> is is it a pun? And the conch is part of his name. Yeah. So that's or a sound effect that sounds like it, yeah. Right, yeah. Onomatopoeia. And so you're you you know, it's also fun. You know, whenever you can yell point or mbop or mm -hmm. conk, yeah. conk, 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 you try it, try it on for size while you're watching football. Are you kidding? Yeah. Br bringing more joy to the game. That's we, right. We have a lot of sound effects. Yeah, we do. We are grown stupid men. <laughs> 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 All right, the New York Football Jets, two and ten, or I'm sorry, two and thirteen. Real quick, yeah. Would you play T.J. Hawkinson? I would, uh, uh, yes, rather, yes. Yeah. I'd rather play Big Irv. I'd rather play Eric Ebron. Look, you got four quarters you got to fill, and somebody has to catch the ball. Okay. I'd rather play Big Irv, though. That's a good point. I would play Big Irv over Hawkinson, but I would play Hawkinson what over Ebron. What if you said, hawk, 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 hawk? <laughs> no, it doesn't, doesn't work. I no. think you got to be careful. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Two and 13. The Patriots are six and nine. Nice. nice. Uh, I love Michael Keaton. <laughs> Oh, the motivation for the Jets. What is the motivation here? Three in a row. Um, I mean, you got a full colonoscopy on the way. You got you got to win one for Gase. Sure you do. 
Sure you do. One for the Gipper. Uh, (laughs) So we've got the Patriots at a level four. Uncle Bill probably doesn't want to get pooped on in the year. But Uncle Bill hasn't had a lot to say about getting pooped on or not getting pooped on. When you don't have personnel, you don't really choose it. It It chooses you. One of the problems with the motivation scale is that it's different for everybody. I believe the motivation for Bill Belichick will be at a 10. Um, I believe that the motivation for the players will be at a 2. You know, this isn't the quarterback of the future. This isn't the team of the future. This is the end of the year. I, I, you know, I I think a motivation of 4 is a little high here for New England, other than the divisional aspect. And from a fantasy standpoint, starting players seems impossible on that side of the ball, uh, really, at all. If if Damian Harris plays, it'll be a committee of... Yeah, just trash, I think. And then Ty Johnson's a good play on the other side. Also, the Jets, I know it seems weird, but they've been really, really good against the run. This is a trend that I noticed a couple weeks ago. And then since that time, they've been even better. Um, you can throw on the Jets, no problemo. But when you look at their, you know, the last five weeks, they are negative 5.6 fantasy points uh, v- above opponent's average uh, to to the running back position. And they've been playing good football for two weeks. I mean, they really have. They've played motivated football. You playing Jamison Crowder? Sure. Yeah. I mean, nine targets, eight targets the last couple of weeks. I mean... Limited running game, too. You yeah. might have a little more involvement in the underneath stuff. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, anybody else you want to mess with in this game? Uh, no, really. no. Ty, no. Ty Johnson, Jamison Crowder, and uh, hey, last week... He did. Chris Hearn Chris got a touchdown. Herndon. Oh, yeah. Right in our faces. It was great. I, I mean, it was, th- those are the things that make – when you can make a Chris Herndon touchdown special in week 16, yeah. you're doing something right. Anybody on earth have him in their lineup that week? No. 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 Okay. Dallas Cowboys and Giants, this is a game with some motivation for both sides. Cowboys are one-and-a-half-point favorites, 45-point over-under. And uh, we've got it down as motivation level four. What? That's, that's, that's got to be five. five. It's five Kyle. for each team. Kyle. Pathetic. That's that's shameful. This is literally a you, division winning. You win this and you're in to the best of your ability. I mean, you still need luck. You need the, the Washington football team to lose. But that is the last game of the night. In this game, you are playing for a home field <laughs> playoff game. Oh, wait, you are? Yes, you get the home field. You get yes. the home field. This this five and ten, five and ten New York Giants team in Week Seventeen is playing for a potential home field football game. Yeah, so this is a motivation of five for both teams without question. It's going to be uh, an exciting one because of what's on the line, and therefore you have all the major players in this game that you can count on for whatever they're worth counting on. So, where's the? Uh, like, are you chasing what CeeDee Lamb has done the last two weeks? Wide receiver 10, wide receiver 8. Some of what he's done has been heavily touchdown dependent. I wanted to make him my take it up to 100. I chose not to. Um, you know, he, he returned a, uh, you know, a, a touchdown in, a, in an onside kick, for instance, two weeks ago that helped inflate the numbers. Uh, the Washington – or uh, the the New York Giants have been pretty good against wide receivers both on the season and over the last five weeks. So I'm not really chasing those points personally. Rashard do, Higgins or C.D. Lamb? I would go C.D. Lamb because I think he's the more talented player. T. Higgins or C.D. Lamb? T. Higgins. T. Higgins. You agree with that, Mike? Yeah. Amari Cooper did drop a touchdown last week, was a little bit more involved. Uh, Michael Gallup, he was incredible in Week 17 last year. Three touchdowns. And Gall- Gallup is the the toughest one of this bunch to break down where – you know, over the last couple of weeks, Michael Gallup has been great for for fantasy purposes. But you know, we got what four of his five touchdowns have come in the last four games. I'm taking the over in this game. I think that this all is right. going to be a high scoring game. Right. I I would I would play Andy Dalton. I would play Zeke. I would play all three wide receivers. I'd play Dalton Schultz. I think yep. Zeke is is actually a, a a smash play. They're going to rely on him. The Giants. That's where you beat them. And he looked better last week. So I, I think, he did. I think uh, you know, it's almost like it's weird to say that Zeke would qualify for like a taking it to 100 player or like a bounce back. 
but I think that's where we are, and I, I would happily, I would love to play Zeke. This I'm week. not excited about Wayne Gallman though, because his usage in the the rotation and Deion Lewis and Alfred Morris short yardage is going to go to Alf these days. I'm I'm a little concerned because he's been so absent for the past couple of weeks. Yeah, that's it. Sucks too, because Wayne Gallman should be a great play this week. You Six have, carries last week. Yeah, his opportunities have been under ten the past couple of weeks, but the matchup against the Cowboys defense is so juicy 28th against fantasy running backs over the last six weeks if like he I don't want to play Wayne Gallman but I think that you can flex him in the in the case of the event that the game script ends up being positive for the New York, the New York Giants and Wayne Gallman is having success you it, it's theoretically possible that you see him back up at that 15 plus touches. Wayne Gallman or Ty Johnson <sighs> wow uh I guess I'm going. I'm going Ty just because I'm. I'm more confident in his volume. Me too. Which means you're, nobody's going Gallman in the sure. sense that Ty Johnson's out there. He's available to be picked up right now. Um, Daniel Jones is the DFS dart throw of the week, and those have been going yeah. really well. From it, it makes sense. Even Kyle, uh, even though he was so dumb to put this as a motivation of, of a four, he's been uh, great for the DFS advice. This year and the DFS pass and the DFS pod, if you're listening to that, they go on through the playoffs up until the Super Bowl. Yep. So. All right. And then Sterling Shepard, I, I brought up as my taking it to 100. I think I'll have an opportunity in this game against the poorest Dallas defense. Like I said, I think it's going to be a high scoring game. So looking forward to that one, actually. I'm just going to forget the records. Uh, something's on the line. So. All right. Let's get into the starts and then we'll get back to the matchups. Starts of the week. All right, my start of the week in week 17 at the quarterback position is Kirk Cousins against that Detroit Lions. I'm going to put it in quotes, defense. No Dalvin Cook in this game. It's going to be the Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Irv Smith show. And Dallas has given up. Jason brought it up earlier in the week. They've given up two number one overall performances and two number three overall performances to opposing quarterbacks in the last five weeks. It's unbelievable. So, uh, And that was Brady, Rodgers, Watson, and Tannehill. So Kirk Cousins is set up to be leaned on a little bit more by the team this week. And uh, I talked about the records. Thielen's three away from a touchdown record for Minnesota. And then Justin Jefferson, 46 away from that record. And Big Irv has been reliable. So you, I like Kirk Cousins. Yeah, I mean, I went to put Kirk Cousins in three seconds after you. It was like a race to see who could get Kirk Cousins as your – uh, start of the week, but I, I also love Ryan Tannehill this week at Houston. They're playing for the four seed against you know a, a juicy defense. Uh, Houston's not been that good, and the whole well, Houston's terrible against the run D. And Derrick Henry is going to have all the work and really take it away. There's only been two times this season where Derrick Henry's had a top ten running back performance where Tannehill was bad. Most of Henry's big weeks are Tannehill's good weeks as well. Against Detroit, both of these guys were top five, weeks 11 and 12. Tanny was top 10 both weeks. Those were weeks where Derrick Henry was a top three running back. So I, I think Tannehill has a good week against Houston. And I also want to echo that. Kirk Cousins is the stream of the week. Uh, I love Kirk. I love Phillip Rivers. But it's week 17, and I wanted to give some dap to my comeback player of the year. He should – Easily sweep the comeback player of the year. But Alex Smith, this who who this is a risky call for a start of the week. That's why I'm highlighting the other players. But I want to say it, man. Alex Smith, if he plays on Sunday night football against the Philadelphia Eagles, I think he's going to have a good game. If he plays, I'm going to call that Washington will win the game and make it into the playoffs. The past five games, the Eagles are the second best matchup for fantasy quarterbacks. You have Antonio Gibson back. And I like Alex Smith, so I just want to highlight well, his return to football. I would I would love to have had – I thought about taking a Washington wide receiver as my taking yeah. it to 100. The problem was I – with any hope for Alex Smith is I just didn't know – I'm like, am I going to take Cam Sims? You know what I mean? Sure. Is it going to be a J.D. McKissick week? It's it's going to be a fun game. I hope it they is. make it in. I mean, it, it'd be neat for Rivera and Smith and, and that opportunity there. I but, do think Cam Sims is, is someone that, you know – if you're needing a player and you can pick him up and start him, he's not the worst. No, he's not. He's had some big plays. All right. Um, Melvin Gordon is my running back start of the week against yes. the Las Vegas Raiders. Yes, please. He disappointed last week with the opportunity that he had, but he has had 
a number of monster games in recent weeks. The Raiders have been the fourth best matchup for fantasy running backs over the last five weeks and were just annihilated by Miles Gaskin. So I think Melvin Gordon will get it done this week against the Rams. Yeah, I'm going with uh, a surprise here. DeAndre Swift. I pivoted from David Johnson, my original start of the week, because I wanted to highlight Swift. Prior to having the worst quarterback in the NFL this last week, uh, on both sides NFL of his... NFL history, sorry. Right. And on both sides of his concussion missed games, DeAndre Swift had been dominating. Uh, we're talking, you know, one of the top running backs out there. Last week shouldn't scare us away. He had 15 opportunities, including five targets, which, as Mike pointed out, he gets exactly Every no week. more, no less. Yep. He's it's contractually obligated to get five targets a week, but that was against one of the best rush defenses in the league against Tampa Bay. This week, they're playing one of the weakest run defenses in the league. Over the last five weeks, only Houston is allowing more fantasy points above opponent's average as Minnesota is giving up 7.9 more points per game to the running back position than what that that average running back score is. They're bottom six on the season as well, so opportunity, talent, and the matchup say, even with a bad quarterback, I'm playing DeAndre Swift. I'm going with Malcolm Brown, Rams running back versus the Arizona Cardinals. I get it. Cam Akers could be back, but Cam Akers has an ankle sprain. I mean, it, you, they will have to use Malcolm Brown and to me that Malcolm Brown will be the goal line running back. Backup quarterbacks against Arizona? Uh, you know, that's been fine uh, lately. Their defense is still giving up points. And Arizona has a crazy divisional split when I went and I looked into this. Every divisional game this year, Arizona has given up top 10 production to the running back position. And I don't see any reason why it stops here with, with a backup quarterback. Malcolm Brown is in play. If Cam Akers is active. I'm still playing Malcolm Brown as a all right. flex. Uh, all right, my turn. Yep. A.J. Brown against Houston. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think a redemption week from last week is in store. No blizzard, just Houston. A blizzard of kindness from their secondary. And uh, we just saw uh, T. Higgins go off against Houston's secondary. Brown actually had eight targets in the blizzard game, just – you know, it didn't go his way. Are you had talking about World of Warcraft? No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, okay. Hearthstone. Yeah. Brown currently sits as the wide receiver 14 on the year after a wide receiver finished last year. He missed a couple games this year, so A.J. Brown will get it done. And I'm going Jarvis Landry. Uh, love the player. He's just a talented wide receiver. Just got activated. A, just now. Boom. Uh, in a must-win game for them. The Steelers are a tough matchup, so you might go, oh, I don't know, but they're sitting Big Ben. And, uh, you know, I'm sure if they have any nicks and bruises on the defensive side of the ball, they'll do the same there to protect their uh, playoff team. Uh, he was top 24 wide receiver three of the last four games, and he's off the COVID uh, close contact list. And I'm going to go with Mike Williams from the Los Angeles Chargers. There will be no Keenan Allen. He saw 10 targets last week at Kansas City. They've already declared they're going to be resting players. I imagine they will be resting players on defense as well. Uh, Mike Williams is, is a strong play, and if you want that narrative, motivational uh, street to stroll down, right now Justin Herbert has the rookie record, and he's sitting at 28 touchdowns. He would be the first rookie to ever throw for 30 touchdowns in his uh, debut. He'll probably get it done in this one. I love the Mike Williams pick. I keep waiting for it, though. Mm -hmm. I keep waiting for the Mike Williams like explosion Sure. without Keenan Allen, so hopefully this week. I like it. All right. I am going to go with Irv Smith, Big Irv, as my tight end start of the week. No Dalvin Cook, as I said. Lions are the the Lions are the fifth best tight end matchup over the last five weeks. And like I said, he's had two top three finishes in the last three weeks. He just skipped the week where Mike played him, and he had nine yeah. targets last week. So I like Big Irv a lot this week. And he with last week's performance, Big Irv is finally above the law. Oh, yes, Mike. Nice <laughs> reference. Um, I am going... <laughs> and he squints his eyes. He has no idea what we're no, talking about. No, but it's it's great. <laughs> oh, that was maybe my favorite reference <laughs> in a long time. Uh, I'm going with Noah Fant. Noah Fantastic is what we have seen the last couple of weeks. I think we're going to see it again after we said no. Uh, Fant, he said, yes. Yes to me. <laughs> The, tig the targets are finally there. He had nine targets and 11 targets in the last two weeks, respectively. The health 
is finally there. That's a big problem. He was playing through, uh, you know, a, a wrapped up angle for the majority of the the season. He had the highest snap percentage of the season since that week five injury. And the Raiders matchup is fine. So I think no offense, someone you can throw out there in week 17. And I'm with Andy's pick of Big Irv, but I just want to highlight Dalton Schultz taking on the Giants. They can be beat at the tight end position. The Giants have six games where they have given up top 12 production. This is a uh, touchdown or bust type of a play, but Dallas has to win, and uh, and Dalton Schultz is on the field, you know, 90 plus percent of the snaps. So you have a shot here. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Oh, get your lips ready for a championship with a really nice pucker. Because we're going with the best, the Ravens' Justin Tucker. Get your lips ready. Just give me a kiss. <laughs> All right. Well, let's. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, impressive. Justin Tucker. Good pick for this week's Boom Boom Kicker. Let's jump back into the fantasy forecast. Fantasy forecast. All right. The 4 and 11 Atlanta Falcons take on the 10 and 5 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Buccaneers are six and a half point favorites. It's a 50 point over under. And, uh, well, Tampa Bay, they've already clinched the playoff berth. They can lock in the five seed with a win. We've got them listed as a motivation level of four. How confident are you starting Tampa Bay offensive pieces? I'm I'm fairly confident. Um, I was listening to Bruce Arians uh, talk yesterday about how much he wants to be eleven and five. That's uh, you know a, a a record teams don't usually get to, and uh, the the motivation is there for them. The matchup against Atlanta, they've certainly been much better the second half of the year. Uh, post the firing of Dan Quinn than they were. The, they're not the beat-up, uh, easy target matchup that they were to start the season, but they're also not a world-class defense that you're afraid to play against. So I think all the Tampa Bay players are are in play. Brady, or the three wide receivers, Gronk. I think they really want to win this game. Yeah, I would be willing to upgrade them to a five on motivation, and here's why. If they win, they lock in the five. If they lock in the five, they go on the road against the NFC East winner. So that is motivation to me. I want to play the winner of the Do NFC they? East. Correct. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So they. Uh, yeah, because five would play four, and they would tec technically the four seed uh, would five be. Would, no, they they would play the NFC East. Whoever wins the NFC East is the. Uh, is the fourth seed? Yeah, yes, because they're the they get the fourth seed. Yeah, because so they're two, the worst seven, of the three, six, four, five. Oh man, that's what I'm saying. I like. Yeah, it, it you gotta like, win. Feels like winning two games almost potentially. <laughs> um, Atlanta's motivation is probably reserved for being a division rival that could disrupt something that Tampa wants to do. Uh, it's no different. It's very similar to the Cincinnati Bengals. They're not trying to uh, tank for a pick. They're trying to win their games. They looked good last week. Should have won the game against the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, so I think you're going to see the you know similar team, similar output. Yeah, I mean Ricky Morris is coaching for a job. Yep. So they're going to play. So Matt Ryan is in play in the matchup. Um, the running back situation is gross in Atlanta. If I was picking one based on what I watched in the field last week, I'd actually still pick Todd Gurley. He was getting all the third down work and uh, came out. And even though Edo Smith had 10, 11 carries. Gurley had the more valuable touches to me. Well, and it's irrelevant. I mean, you, you saw 15 touches for DeAndre Swift last week. Tampa Bay against running backs, they, they lock it down. So, Ito Smith, Todd Gurley, Brian Hill, they are not they are not in play at all against this Tampa Bay defense. But you want to know who he is? Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley. I'll go ahead and uh, keep him in the lineup that got you to the championship. Yeah, yeah. No Julio Jones to finish the year. Uh, no Kenny Galladay to finish the year. These are players that did not provide for fantasy managers this year. Mike Evans is 40 yards away from 1,000 receiving yards-wise to keep his streak alive. I imagine he'll accomplish that goal in this game. 
Ooh, Godwin, Brown. Oh, I, I've got a Mr. Arians, mm-hmm. Bruce. If I can call you Bruce, I have a bone to pick. I was listening to him talk. I was talking about this. I was. This was yesterday. He was asked about Mike Evans, and he was gushing over Mike Evans. He said he's never coached a superstar wide receiver Whoa. less selfish than Mike Evans. Whoa. Whoa, Bruce. Come on. Bruce. Come on, Mr. Hyperbole. Bruce. Larry Fitzgerald has a bone to pick. Did you forget about <laughs> Larry Fitzgerald? Nah, all right. I'm off my soapbox. All he right. is really good at the hyperbole, though. Oh, he's, yeah, yeah. He's such a fun quote. I love Arians for that reason. Yeah. I was playing some Madden with my son. Uh, I, I took him down. I mean, just throwing that oh, out there. Oh, yeah, good. Uh, and I no was, mercy. I was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the, in the game. Went with the color rush, mm-hmm. dark jerseys, oh, looking nice. really nice. Uh, Bruce Arians is as red as a tomato in that game. <laughs> in that game and in real life, his sideline shot was true to form. They got his, they got his oh, hue correct that in that is game. Funny. Oh, it was spectacular. All right, Rob Gronkowski, who I used a lot in Madden last night to much success. He has the tight end seven in points per game since week six in a viable play. Uh, once again, and then Hayden Hurst has kind of shown up in the end zone in the last couple of games. I think he's fine. Would you play Hayden Hurst or Big Irv? I'd play Big Irv. I'd play Big Irv. Would you play Hayden Hurst or Dalton Schultz? Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst. All right. Yeah, for the upside. All Dalton has is medium side. Yep. Yeah, but that's 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 saying something. <laughs> All right, the Green Bay Packers at twelve and three, taking on the eight and seven Chicago Bears. This game. Has a motivation level of five for both teams. The Packers need to win to lock up the bye, and there's only one bye per league or uh, conference, I mean. So this is big and important for them, and then the Bears need to win to clinch a playoff berth. So they can also clinch with an Arizona loss. Yeah, it's 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 ironic because both of these teams can lose this game and still have it go their way. They don't have to win, but winning secures it. So they are playing for the promise. So uh, Aaron Rodgers and company, I think Rodgers is the MVP, by the way. I I, I think he deserves it. His numbers are insane this year. All you had to do is draft a quarterback in the first round to get it done. If that's what got it done, then that was a good pick. Yeah, he says it. I mean, he, he comes out and says, of course not, you know, but. The results are 44 touchdowns, five interceptions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, his numbers are astronomically good. Aaron Jones, not listed on the uh, injury report. A.J. Dillon, both of those players uh, could have a impact in this game once again. However, if Jamal Williams was active, I would, I would really be off of A.J. Dillon. Yeah, Jamal Williams limited on Wednesday with his quad injury. But I, I agree. If if Jamal is out, I think A.J. Dillon is, is in play as a flex. Oh, yeah. Uh, Robert Tanya did not score last week, and therefore he was disappointing, but I would still put him in your lineup. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about how touchdown giving the – Chicago Bears are to the tight end position. Tunyon is a great play this week. Does so this mean Tunyon will drop a touchdown based on the last couple of weeks? I think Tunyon's good enough to catch a ball. Okay. And mm-hmm. then the Chicago side, David Montgomery has been unbelievable. His opportunities since week 12, 17, 21, 15, 34, 25 last week, and again was benched because that game was out of hand. So 25 touches is almost a lock. Yeah, Montgomery in play. Did you guys realize that Tunyon was working on a five-game streak? Of catching a touchdown? Uh, I knew he had been pretty good. We we have yes. the nickname from Al Borland over there. Oh, yeah. T.D. Tunyon. T.D. Tunyon. T.D. Yeah. Tunyon. Um, yeah, uh, he's he's been uh, he's been very good. But I remind you, 44 touchdowns Yep. for one Aaron Rodgers. Unbelievable. Allen Robinson. Yep. He will have Jair Alexander for a, a, a portion of this game. It, it hurt Robbie Anderson. It hurt Corey Davis. So my expectations for Robinson are are lowered, actually, this week. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think he'll end the week probably as a solid wide receiver, too, but he's not a guy you're going to sit. Um, you just you know minimize your expectations, but you're definitely starting Allen Robinson. Yeah, and, and Allen Robinson, to me, is 
he is an elite level wide receiver. Robbie Anderson and Corey Davis, they're good, but Allen Robinson is much better. All right. The Raiders, seven and eight against the Denver Broncos, five and ten. Neither of these teams have anything to play for at this point. Um so where do we go with our – is this just going to be played out like a normal game or are we going to see more of the young faces out on the field because you have an opportunity to give them some game time? The Raiders are two-point favorites. Uh, the Raiders smashed the Broncos in uh, week 10. I, I mean, Drew Locke is going to – you still have to evaluate on Drew Locke and this offense. So I don't think that – I don't think Denver is going to do anything different than they would have if they were trying to play to win. Okay. Uh, Jason, do you agree? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is the, this is a, a probably a fine game for fantasy. Even though the motivation is going to be low for both teams, neither one has anything to play for other than just personal pride and divisional matchup. The reality is these are two defenses that aren't scary, and in a game where you can kind of degaff, you might you might end up with some good fantasy options. You don't always have to be the most motivated, you know, a lot of times you have to win to get in and you get blown out. That happens. You, you, you know, the, the pressure gets to you here. You know, it's like, there's no pressure on either team. So they can go out. Maybe drew lock has his best performance because there's nothing riding on it. So I'm not afraid of this game, regardless of the motivation. Josh Jacobs, 34 yards from a thousand Melvin Gordon, my start of the week at the running back position. Jacobs had a huge game against Denver in week 10. Uh, Nelson Aguilar is the play to me. Um, Jerry Judy had 15 targets last week. Ooh, and a lot of drops. Jerry Judy. What, what's your evaluation, Jason? You are of the show. You are Mr. Jerry Judy. You have been uh, the conductor of that bandwagon. Yeah. How do you feel about the season for so, for Jerry Judy? I, 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 I am disappointed that it was not a rookie breakout season. But what we saw, I mean, was plenty of great tape, getting open, great route runner, exactly what we expected. I think it's because of the quality of current year fantasy success from guys like Justin Jefferson, uh, big stretches from T. Higgins and some of the other big C. rookies, CeeDee Lamb. C uh, Lamb and Claypool, that Jerry Judy is a massive disappointment for fantasy, but I still think he's going to be an absolute excellent excellent player uh not every rookie wide receiver comes in and just dominates your one i do think it will be complicated in denver because you will get Cortland sutton back mm -hmm. and uh, kj hamler has flashed almost equally with jerry judy on that offense to me and so and tim patrick has been yeah, really the one in the absence of sutton there's not a clear path to that guaranteed year to uh jump i think but that is where the draft capital, the money, the name, all those things genuinely have an effect on going into next year. He will be the two to Cortland Sutton's one to start. And that's not to say he will retain it, but he will be given the opportunity because of where they draft him. All right. Uh, Jacksonville, 1-14, and 14, taking on the 10-5 and five Colts. Jacksonville is motivated to lose. They want Trevor Lawrence. Um, they're already locked. Yeah, they, they are. They don't locked. have to do anything. Oh, that's true. So they could they could play disruptor in the division. So maybe they we could. upgrade that to a three. All right. Um, and the Colts need to win. So uh, what is their situation? The AFC South. They win it with a win and a Tennessee loss, and they get a playoff berth if they win. And then they need either Baltimore or Cleveland or Miami to. The Colts aren't going to make the playoffs. The Colts can win this game, and if all of the other ten win teams win their games, which because they're not facing each other, the Colts can win and still be out. However, they can also win their division. So they need one of, essentially, they need Tennessee, Baltimore, Cleveland, or Miami to lose. I'm just not sure any of those happen. I certainly don't think Baltimore, Cleveland, or Miami are going to lose. I think Cleveland could definitely lose. Sorry, Browns fans, but yep. the Steelers are still a good defense. You're dealing with COVID issues and yeah, I mean, certainly always possible. Colts are 14-point favorites in this game, 49.5 point over under. Uh, Jacksonville actually beat them in week one. Their only win of the year, kind of irrelevant to this point. Gardner was a player. Right. Uh, Wild to me in this is What's the opposite of a comeback player of the year? Because uh, I'm trying to figure out what award to give Gardner. Like a go-away <laughs> player of the year? Mm, yep. That that works. The 
Uh, the numbers that are, are absolutely striking to me, the Colts' defensive numbers against fantasy positions. Because on the season, 11th against quarterbacks, 12th running backs, 17th wide receivers, 6th against tight ends. Those are out, that That's an outstanding defense. But then if you look at recent history, 30th against the quarterback, 25th against the running back, 29th against fantasy wide receivers. They have fully collapsed in terms of of becoming a a plus matchup for for fantasy purposes. So, uh, are you in week seventeen? Are you taking that Daria Gumbawale shot, Jason? Uh, I I think it's fine to put Daria out there because the volume will be there. We, Nineteen opportunities last uh, week. Exactly. We know he's going to get the ball. I'm fine with buy or sell ten fantasy points from Daria this week. I will buy ten. I will buy ten too. But I don't know that I would buy twelve. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> you know, high. Can I get you to eleven? High floor, no ceiling. He's just standing on a tall platform. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah. what about the Colts wide receiving options? I looked at them for my starts of the week because I love the matchup in an important game. I mean, I think the Colts wide receivers are going to be great. But I don't know who it's going to be. Yeah, is it going to be Hilton? Is it going to be Pittman? This is a matchup where Pittman could take one is of his. It's going to be Pascal. Absolutely, Pascal. So you don't know where, but I do think you can capitalize on this matchup, on the motivation, and and you know if I had to pick one, it would it would be T. Y. Hilton, who's still been, uh, pretty solid. I know while we were watching last week, it was like, oh, he's not on the field so much when we want him out there every week, but it's been the whole season. Mm -hmm. He played more snaps this last week than he did during his three-week great stretch. He's brought in in certain situations. I still like T.Y. Hilton a lot this week. I would go Hilton. And the reason – last week doesn't concern me because if you watch that game, the the pressure that Pittsburgh can still put on Phillip Rivers caused the Hilton routes to be few and far between, the, the deep routes. So uh, I don't think the pressure that Jacksonville puts on the Colts' offensive line is going to be as significant. Uh, DJ Chark, don't know if he's going to play. I don't think you really have options on the Jacksonville side outside of Dare as a uh, desperation play. If Chark is upgraded to he practices, you know, Thursday, Friday, are you, are you throwing him back in? Probably not. Right. Even you, though I wanted to put him as a taking it to 100 with the injury and with what he's been this year, that was more of a shot to beat you with your own my guy. Gotcha. Jonathan Taylor, 81 yards from 1,000. So uh, yep. he's a great play in this game. Yep. And there you go. The Chargers at six and nine take on the fourteen and one Chiefs. Chiefs are motivation level of one. They don't care, and they're also going to bench all of their players. Patrick Mahomes isn't going to play. I doubt Lev Bell plays. Clyde's not going to play. Tyreek's not going to play. Kelsey's not going to play. No, they they're going to take a week off. And uh, well, two weeks. Yeah, that's true. And the Chargers, on the other hand, are divisional matchup. They could go to seven and nine. I think that matters, you know, a it little does. bit. It definitely in, does. In terms of Herbert's first year, the coach needs to try to hold on to that yes, job, which yes. is in question. Coach, coach Lynn needs to win. If if Anthony Lynn loses to the backups and putters out on the season, yeah. I, I think that there's a chance you could replace him. Yeah, and now the one of the issues here is Herbert struggled last week, and you have to connect it to not only the absence of Keenan Allen, but the absence of Hunter Henry, who was on the COVID list. Oh, Hunter. Hunter uh, may or may not um, be back. So. Yeah, we'll see. What else is going on? Just, I love Mike Williams. He's my star of the week. Yeah, t I mean, the, the matchup is, is really good for Mike Williams, for Tyron Johnson, which means uh, Guyton's going to have a big game. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you, you could take your shot on these wide receivers the same way you can on the Colts wide receivers. Um, you're not exactly sure who it's going to be. Austin Eckler should have an awesome game. Uh, he is an excellent smash play. I think the biggest question here is genuinely Herbert. Is are you wanting, willing to yes. play Herbert in your championship? Yes to both for me. Yeah, I agree. Uh, any other big breakdowns from this game? It's just the question of who's going to be the running back for the Kansas City Chiefs, Daryl Williams or... Darwin Thompson. Yeah, you'll have to follow some news. If Daryl Williams is is playing, I'm willing to throw him out there as a running back too. I am going to go the Darwin direction. Sure. I believe that Daryl is actually more important to this team 
and they may try to limit his exposure, but we'll see. Cardinals, 8-7, and seven, taking on the 9-6 Rams. Both teams really, really need to win. Cardinals, uh, they clinch a playoff berth with a win. The Rams can clinch with a loss if Chicago loses, right? Correct. They but so they need to win. Yeah, I mean, right now, you know, obviously the the odds on favorite is that Chicago is going to lose to the Packers, but this is a win and get in game. It's divisional. This is as high a motivation as it gets. But you have a very banged up Rams team right now. Uh, no Jared Goff, no Daryl Henderson, no. Cooper Cup and maybe not Cam Akers mm -hmm. or if you have Cam Akers back he's two weeks past a high ankle sprain he's not going to be the same guy uh, however the Los Angeles Rams and the Sean McVay era against the Cliff Kingsbury led uh, Arizona Cardinals have decimated them destroyed talk about having someone's number they've just kicked their butts in this game Kenny Drake 81 rushing yards away from a thousand so he needs 30 carries to possibly consider <laughs> but he could get it. a 1000-yard mark. He could get it this game. Chase Edmonds is not expected to be there. And so a full workload from Kenyon Drake who won people championships last year in uh you know the the fantasy playoffs. He I I think he's a fine play. I don't he I don't is. look at him as a smash play, but if he's actually the thing that's been keeping him from being a top-tier running back versus a solid running back is the lack of involvement in the passing game. Now, if you've got Kyler with his leg whip um, issue and maybe he's less mobile and Chase Edmonds isn't there, you could see Drake get more targets uh, than he usually gets this season. Is there an opportunity here for Dan Arnold, who has been uh, heavily targeted in, in higher uh, value situations and with Jalen Ramsey on a potentially – Slightly hobbled or injured DeAndre Hopkins. Sure. Who's the secondary pass-catching option if you're taking a shot? Man, I mean, uh, the secondary option, you could argue, is fits when it comes to targets, but they're so irrelevant. The targets are as worthless for fantasy as it gets. They're close to the line. One touchdown in the last, like, t two years, it feels like. And they... But Krisha Kirk, last week, had 10 targets... He was seven for 76. I think he would be the guy, but this is a, you know, it's not just Ramsey. This defense shuts people down across the board. I don't love any of the options. You're still going to play Hopkins because you, you have to. Right. Was, to Dan Arda, what I was going to say is you have to hope that Kyler and Cliff have forgiven Dan Arnold. If, if you didn't watch the game, uh, Dan Arnold dropped a really easy uh, I think it was like a 40 air yard pass and hit Arnold right in the hands. He dropped it. Arnold had a really bad fumble late in the game that helped uh, create the loss for them against San Francisco. So I just those are those are things that if you're going to play Arnold, you have to hope that those are not impacting coaching decisions on on where to put him out. I, I don't think they'll impact because they don't really have an option. They don't have a replacement for what Dan Arnold does in the offense on the roster. He he was checked out for a concussion on the play he fumbled on too. Like he missed sure. the next series due to concussion check, blue tint stuff. Any other big uh decisions Robert you're making Woods, in this game? Are you you know, Robert Woods I think is a fine play. I realize it's a backup quarterback, it's not what you want. He's not a smash play, but with Cooper Cup out of the game and the fact that they use him as a running back or give him carries and manufacture screens, I think that Robert Woods is is a a, a flex option. All right, uh, let's move into the Seattle San Francisco game. Seattle's eleven and four, and they can actually clinch a number one seed if Green Bay happens to lose, which is certainly possible against Chicago, playing for their playoff lives. And the Saints lose. Saints have to lose as well. Um, so Seattle's got something to play for here. Uh, San Francisco could play spoiler in that role. C.J. Beathard will get the start again. Jeff Wilson. My name is Jeff. Was an incredible pickup last week. It led you to a title, Mike. He did. Um, Brandon Ayuk is going to be out. So I think George Kittle, Jeff Wilson are the two plays on the San Francisco side. Yep, I would love to play both of them. I think they are are smash plays. You, I agree. You, you have to put them in. Um, outside of those two players, I don't know that there's anybody you can play. I agree. 
So the Seahawks. Seahawks are a team that has a very weird vibe for mm, fantasy mm. purposes right now because on one hand they 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 won last week. They keep winning ball games. They're doing what they need to do on the NFL level. They potentially could win the number one seed. So we have a distorted view of the Seahawks. We believe that there is a lack of success to some degree, right? Where you know that he's not cooking and that Metcalf has had a bad second half and Lockett has disappeared and. Well, that's not how the NFL views it. That's not how Pete Carroll views it. So I don't expect this game to be any sort of breakout fantasy performance for any of these offensive options. That being said, who are you playing? I, I agree with you. And just to illustrate that, uh, you know, in the last seven games, they're five and two. They're winning games. And you have one uno top 10 performance from Russell Wilson. But they're winning the game, so it, does, it you know again to, to that was just to illustrate your fantasy versus real life. It was too spicy for Pete Carroll, the cooking. That's right, and so he he, he doesn't like the spice. He uh, got a glass of milk, and that's what you're getting now. Which which means the running game is fine. Uh, Chris Carson is someone that you play. The I think the biggest question you're going to play DK Metcalf because he's. Uh, you know, just an absolute monster on the field. What he can do, you have to have him in your lineup to capitalize. I think there's a chance Seattle benches players in the second half of this game, depending on how the New Orleans-Carolina game's going. Mm. I think you have some concerns there. Because if New Orleans has a very big lead to lock in the number one, you could see some rest in the second half for Seattle. They're they're happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. New Orleans is 11-4, and four, taking on the 5-10 and 10 Carolina Panthers. Uh, Panthers are going to be without Mike Davis. Panthers could be without Robbie Anderson, and I really think that that's going to happen. What that says to me is I'm not going to play Russell Wilson. I'm going to look for a different option because he hasn't been good anyways. I am going to play DK Metcalf. Philip Rivers? Well, you can ask Andy, but there's no reason to ask me. But, it, but it's fun to ask you about well, Philip sure. Rivers. Then give me all of Russell Wilson. Um, Phil, yeah, Philip Rivers or Russ? I'll play Rivers. All right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You are willing to say, yeah, just not the name or that's make right. a personal that's, endorsement. That's right. What I, he said. No personal endorsement of the P River. <laughs> um, but I, I still would play DK Metcalf even with that uh, option of sitting because DK Metcalf really just needs one play. He could be the first quarter, the second quarter, he can have a fine game and then be benched. All right. Uh, New Orleans, though, you're not going to get six touchdowns from Alvin Kamara, but I think you're going to have a nice reprise this week in week 17. There's a lot on the line. He's 68 rushing yards away from 1,000, but that's the least of, of what I think's on the line. They want that number one seed in the bye. Uh, they could use it, and um, you know, Camaro's a great play each and every week. The question is whether you can turn to Emmanuel Sanders, Latavius Murray, Jared Cook. What do you guys think? I think you could play Sanders as a top 25 wide receiver. Uh, he'll, he'll be safe. I mean, he's kind of on that platform with, I don't remember who got that joke. The, uh, the, the no ceiling. <laughs> that was so long. It was ago, so man. long I ago. I have no idea, <laughs> but he's, he's on that platform. So at least he has a friend up who there. Who was that? That was minutes ago. <laughs> it wasn't Robert Woods. This is incredible. You're talking about who has the, 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 the star of Oh, oh right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now word. I the see why we didn't the, remember. The hot platform joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, that, was, that was a great joke. Yeah. So Sanders is up there. You can play him, but I, you, you're not getting you're not getting 75 and two from Emmanuel Sanders. DJ uh, Moore and Curtis Samuel are plays in this game too. I agree. They are plays. Um, both should be fine starts, especially if Robbie, um, you know, it misses. I I really like Jared Cook in in this matchup. You can't just go by what did last week look for me. You know, look like at the tight end position. It's a great matchup. Six touchdowns aren't going to Alvin Kamara here. Um, and, and even if you think about, okay, what did he do last week? He was tight end 16, not good, but he had 82 yards. Jared, that's, Jared, that's fine. That's great for a tight end. Yeah. So um, Jared Cook is, uh, I, I think, a good start. Tennessee Titans are 10-5, and five and they need to win to get in. What a competitive AFC there is. Texans are 4-11. and 11. They could play the spoiler, and that is motivation. These, this game, Titans are 7.5-point favorites. 56 point over under. Assuming Deshaun Watson is healthy, I would expect this game to go down to the wire. I really would. In fact, I will uh I'll give my final almost upset on this one. Andy's almost upset of the week. I believe 
Go uh, ahead. Someone believes yeah. in the J.J. Watt speech. Someone believes I, that Watson is actually healthy. I Someone believes that I made Houston my almost upset against this team back in week four when the game was very, very close. It was 42-36 to 36 in the same type of competitive back-and-forth situation. Um, Houston would love to come in here and eliminate Tennessee from the playoffs, and I don't think they'll be able to because their defense cannot summon up more talent. However, between the Watt speech and Watson's capabilities and the fact that, look, there are a few ways you can disrupt this Tennessee offense, and I just think it'll be a competitive game. Look at the over-under, 56 I, points. I would. I mean, the, the reality is, is this. I want every possible piece in this game I just am terrified of Deshaun Watson's not on the injury health. report at and, and, all. And so that's the thing. If he's if he's not on the injury report, obviously the Vegas line is super high. They are yep. not expecting him to be came injured. back in the last game. If we move forward with the uh, with the best hypothesis that he's fully healthy, then goodness gracious, the points will be flowing in this game. The Titans uh, have hit the over. The highest in the NFL, 11 and three, 11, three and one against uh, the spread. Yes, uh, or against uh, the over against under. the over under wow. uh, hitting the over, and it makes sense because their defense stinks. Their offense is great. Oh, which team am I describing? Right. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean that's a recipe for success, and that really puts everybody who's starting in this game on the table. Brandon Cooks, Kiki QT. David Johnson, Deshaun Watson. I don't know about Mbop. <laughs> I think I'm gonna be out on. I'll be out on Mbop this week. But Look, um, it was a one hit wonder. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yes, that's good. Henry, AJ Brown, Corey Davis, Joni Smith, even if you need to get desperate there um, at the tight end position. And Tannehill's Jason start of the week at quarterback. So I think it's gonna be a fun one. Sunday night, Washington six and nine. The Eagles four ten and one. Washington's a one and a half point favorite in this game on the road. It's a 43 and a half point over under. And uh, yeah, Washington is playing for everything. Win the NFC East, and it is, uh, you know, win, and the NFC East is theirs at seven and nine. At and least a level I could accept. Not only do they win the division, which obviously is, is your number one goal at this point, but you extra crush the hopes and dreams of a divisional rival because someone from that earlier game, that Cowboys Giants game, right. is going to think. We did it. We won the game. We're going to make the playoffs, and then you get to just take a steamy hot turd on oh that Oh, my team. gosh. Yeah, I um, I do think Washington is going to win the game. I'm with Mike on that. I do believe Alex Smith will play, and I think they're going to win. I don't think Jalen Hurts uh, is going to be able to do enough against this defense. Washington is number one against running backs and tight ends over the last six weeks, number three against quarterbacks. Um, they are a disciplined, ferocious defensive line that will cause problems for Jalen Hurts. They're going to confuse him. They're going to put pressure on him. That is when rookies sure. make mistakes. Everything you said about last week came down to Hurts making a lot of mistakes. Turnovers. Maybe his week's different if he doesn't turn the ball over. I expect him to turn the ball over in this game, so I'm not as bullish on Hurts um, in this game as as maybe others are. And speaking to Antonio Gibson, earlier in the week, Scott Turner, the offensive coordinator for Washington, said Gibson's ready to handle a, a heavier workload. They they were fully intending on giving him more uh, this past week, despite the toe injury. But the game scripts turned into a, a smooches game. Yeah, so so that uh, Gibson should be a fine. Yeah, play. you can play him. I am a little bit more bullish on Hertz than than you, Andy. I I think the Eagles are going to win this game and and upset the Washington football team. Um, you, you, it kind of reminds me of a defense. Uh, similar, you know, when when Jalen Hurts and obviously no no game film on him yet, but when he played against the Saints and their great pass rush, and that's a team with physical ability that was uh, usually able to overcome physically the offense of the other team, and that's when Jalen Hurts and his mobility uh, was able to, you know, it wasn't just scheme, and so this is kind of one of those when Chase Young gets through the line he's going to have a harder time chasing down Jalen Hurts than some of these immobile quarterbacks, and I think that could cause a few fits for the for the football team. Uh, I want something on the line in Week 17. You want to water bet the victor of this game? Oh, I would love that. Water bet. I love it because Why not? I want the football team to win, so if I lose the bet, I'm still happy. Yeah, you like those kind of bets. Uh, um, no Monday Night Football this week, so that's our final matchup, Brooksy. 
Oh, yeah. And just a reminder that Dallas Goddard did not practice on Wednesday. So if you're hoping you can count on him, better pay attention to the news. Would yeah. you play Zach Ertz? I would. I would. Okay, Zach Ertz or Jared Cook? PPR, I would go with Zach Ertz. Half um, PPR. I would go with Jared Cook. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Logan Thomas. Look at you. Look, Logan Thomas, man. Yeah. That, what a great story Logan Thomas has been. They were talking with nature to put him in at quarterback last week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's sure. not, a, not a terrible. But he can't throw to himself. But then they don't have a tight end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the one time they put him in, like they, they did a trick play. I don't know if you guys saw yes, it. But, I did. But Logan, it, he's not accurate. But this dude, he's got a he's cannon. Got a cannon. <laughs> that ball, yeah, he, he did. That ball just launched. Out that was there. a Bruce Arians pick, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was the uh, drafting the Josh Allen that didn't turn out like Josh Allen. All right, let's get into our next segment. Prop it like it's hot. Presented by Monkey Knife Fight. I'm going first. Don't look at my. Don't look at mine. Okay. Okay. Have you uh, have you okay. guys seen it already? Okay, yeah. Calvin Ridley. Yeah, I'm taking the more. What do you think his line should be? What would you? I already saw it, but oh. where, where would I set the line? I would set the line at Calvin Ridley, eighty-seven and a half. What? I would set the line for Calvin Ridley at like one hundred five. One hundred five is where I would put it as well, because he's just been. I mean, when when Julio Jones is gone, the line is ninety six and a half. I'm taking the more Julio eleven. I would make more Ridley a must start in this. He's had six games without Julio. He's averaging one hundred and eighteen in those six games. So I yeah yeah I I get it. I I would set the line lower because this is a pretty good Tampa Bay situation and they're playing for a lot so but tampa bay as far as like you know guarding wide receivers that's yeah. been, it's been that's been a juicy matchup for wideouts it depends which cornerback you're facing over there uh, their net is a problem but um i just wonder what ridley and the net for the falcons goes to calvin ridley <laughs> sure it's certainly how they uh i get it the more makes sense uh, i'll go miles gaskin the line is set at 13.5 fantasy points for Miles Gaskin. That's Would that's, you take the more on that, Jason? I would very much yeah, take Yeah, heavy more rushing on that. attack, huge passing game involvement. Bills have done not a lot against running backs and then have nothing to play for and might have games. That's dunking on a kitty hoop. Yeah, that one's a <laughs> that was a smash play. So, Mike. All right. Well, uh Mason Rudolph, 201 and a half passing yards. I will take the less. Uh scientifically Mason Rudolph sucks. Uh, Scientifically? Yeah. yeah. You can't argue. Under a microscope? Yes. You cannot argue against it. He's not good. He, I don't know why he's still the backup for the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, but I will take the less due to the fact that he sucks, and anytime I can bet against Mason Rudolph, can I take your chance? I'm going to take it. Yeah, you can You can take your chance as well. Monkey Knife Fight this week. Ballerspicks.com. Go there. Use the code BALLERS to get a 100% deposit match. Um, up to $50 on Monkey Knife Fight. It is uh, going to be very fun over there throughout the playoffs. Again, that's ballerspicks.com. We also want to give a shout-out to our uh, faithful sponsor, Pristine Auction. Yesterday, J.K. Dobbins signed jersey $76. All right. Okay. So you can go to pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS, and that will get you $10. Oh, we did it. We'll see you next year. We will see you on the other side, everyone. Congratulations to all the champions. Congratulations to all those who will become champions in a matter of days. Thank you for supporting the show. We'll see you next week. Happy New Year. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.